Welcome everybody to the Goat Cast. This is season three of the Goat Cast. Um, this has been a long season. We're going to end it at the end of this year. 2022 is coming to an end. Season three is coming to an end. Uh, we will start fresh January, and we'll. I mean, I I've got different ideas. You know, I did the Halloween stuff. It doesn't seem like people really enjoy the Halloween stuff, so. Uh, we're going to move past that. I was going to do timeline stuff and, you know, re-ranking the, you know, doing a tier list for the, the different movies from the Halloween timeline, but I think you guys are Halloweened out (laughs) based on views and things like that. So we're going to, we're going to move on. Um, I'm going to be doing different things. Uh, tonight we're going to return to what, the GoCast started out with, and that is uh, sports talk. And we're going to talk about the NBA tonight. The NBA is, what, three, four weeks into the season. It's, it's still very, very early. So any of my um, predictions, any of my thoughts, it's still early. So a lot can happen with, between now and March, April, May, when, you know, the, the pretty much the uh, – playoff scenario starts shaping up um you know we will i will be back tomorrow with the crown jewel wwe crown jewel review i will be doing some more wrestling content on here uh also uh we're going to try to return some anime we do have uh one piece the new movie red coming out so uh we'll try to get somebody to review that we have Katie Kane and Raptor X around, so somebody will eventually get to uh, reviewing that. So, um, yeah, we're going to try to keep this thing rolling and keep this thing running throughout the rest of this year. Uh, Like I said, the Halloween stuff didn't really stick to me. Halloween ends wasn't good. So I think a lot of people were just bummed by that, and they just don't care about any of the other topics, any, you know, the re-ranking and tier list and the timelines people just like you know we've had enough of this <clears throat> so anyway we're going to get into the 2022 2023 nba season <clears throat> which has been <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> which has already been uh very eventful in its early stages uh we've just wow, you know what I'm saying. That's all I can say. There, there are teams that are just. I'm not going to go to. I'm not going to, you know, go into a lot of uh, predictions and stuff like that. Uh, you know, who's overachieving, who's underachieving. It's very early. I'm a Spurs fan. My Spurs are doing fairly well, but I'm not going to go, you know, here and talk about how you know they're they're still a lottery team. They will be a lottery team. They lost tonight. They're. <clears throat> they're on they're about to start their losing streak and I'm fine with that but <clears throat> you know we're going to talk about some of the big stories some of the teams that are you know are very much a part of the press and you know what's going on with them I'm 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 going to just delve into you know your your Lakers your Nets of course uh your Warriors your Bucks your Maybe your Clippers, you know, just just a few delving into the season so far. So far, the season, um, you know, you have some people overachieving. You have some teams that are just on the cusp, but it is very early. This is an 82 game season, and to try to speculate on what a team is here, <clears throat> most teams aren't even 10 games deep. It's just you know we're just fooling ourselves, you know, so. But the, the 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 big the big stories are definitely coming from Brooklyn right now. Uh, first and foremost, this week um, the, the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets, Steve Nash, Hall of Famer, um, former MVP, former player, uh, he was fired from his position. Um, you know the. At the time, the Nets were, I believe, two and five. They won again tonight, so they're 
what three and six, two and six, no three and five through something in that range. Um, <clears throat> but <clears throat> we know the turmoil over the uh, off season where Kevin Durant wanted Steve Nash gone, and he kind of wanted you know a new regime as far as even the management. But that didn't go through. He stayed, you know, everybody thought there may be some type of Kyrie um, trade with the Lakers, you know, with all the turmoil going on there. And we'll talk about them. I'm currently, you know, have their game in the <clears throat> in the background. But you had that. So you, you knew there was some dissension. Dissension with that team, but they said, you know, we're going to bring the, the troops back and we're going to do well. And, and a lot of analysts, a lot of people, part of sports media were like, you know, don't overlook the nets, but we've seen the nets so far. Granted, they're missing a piece in Seth Curry and Joe Harris is still trying to acclimate himself back into the, uh, into the game after missing time for injury. So, <clears throat> kind of, <clears throat> but when you have a team with two superstars, one megastar, I think you know you can you can put KD Kevin Durant at that megastar level because many people, even going back a year, two years ago, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you know, place him at the top, you place him as one of the best players in all of NBA. So we have that along with Kyrie Irving. He's a proven winner. He's won he's won a championship outside of Brooklyn. He won it with, of course, with LeBron, with the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's kind of done well with other teams, but he's been that guy that people or teams just don't quite get. He's he's got a weird aura to him. And, uh, you know, he, he had a stint in Boston where, you know, they looked like they were really contenders, but actually played better with him not on the court. So he finally left to Brooklyn, and then he managed to get Kevin Durant there. <clears throat> they knew they saw that, you know, we, we might need an, another piece. You know, we had the whole COVID thing, and, you know, they they, they – through the sink at uh, Houston at the time uh, to get James Harden. So you had James Harden, MVP, Kyrie, top star, Kevin Durant, MVP. <clears throat> it was looking great for them. Didn't work. You know, Kyrie wouldn't get the, the vaccine, couldn't play, everything kind of, you know, James Harden, said, you know, I, I don't want to fool with these guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> so he bullied his way out of Brooklyn. So the Nets got somebody else in turmoil and Ben Simmons. And it's just been a pure circus with them. And then, you know, you throw in Steve Nash. He's never coached a team before. This was his first coaching assignment. You're coaching – a team that's supposedly going to be a a championship contender, a, a team that said they didn't even need a coach. They were that good. You know, they just knew basketball. And all of these things happen. And I'm going to speak about the Kyrie stuff in a few minutes. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, you had all that happen. Then you have a team that starts out one and five or two and five, something like that. And you can, you know, certain teams you can understand, hey, you're missing a superstar. You're missing this. They're missing role players. You, know, you look at the Milwaukee Bucks, Giannis, Antetokounmpo, um, Drew Holiday. They're missing really their second best player in Chris Middleton. They're missing Pat Connington, who is a big-time role player. But they're winning. They are currently 7-0, and and I think they are – on their way to win number eight tonight. Um, I'm trying to bring that up right now. Uh, yeah, I think they're they're well on their way to winning that. Okay, sorry, excuse. 
Excuse me, sorry. So anyway, sorry that was a ad that came through. Um, hopefully we can edit that out. But uh, I'm like this even in. We're going to keep it real. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, they they're currently on their way to hopefully winning number eight. They're going against the Timberwolves. But you know, you see a team like that, no turmoil, no no issues. Next man stands up, stands up. And uh, they, you know, they they have that tough, you know, grit. They they play defense. They play offense. They feed off of their leader, who was Giannis Antetokounmpo. And you look at that. Now you look at the Brooklyn Nets, you know, and you look at Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. These guys have won championships, multiple. One has multiple, um, you know, but you have two championship players, each winning it in in different ways and in different on different teams with different you know personnel, and we jump forward to now, and it's just like there's there's just something going on there, and, and it culminated into the firing of Steve Nash. Now we're hearing that I'm a Idoka, who was the Boston Celtics coach, who's been in his own drama, suspended, is now the front runner. So you're going to take somebody that's already been a part of non-basketball drama. You're going to bring him into a team that's having not only basketball drama, but basketball drama. And you want him to fix that. Weird to me, but this is the case with the Brooklyn Nets. And... So now uh, we move on to Kyrie Irving and his antics and him kind of following suit with Kanye West. We're not going to speak on Kanye West. This is not that podcast. This is not that conversation. Um, So he tweets or shares or whatever a movie about anti something with anti-Semitic visuals or or speak or whatever um, in it. And that's just a no-no, you know. You just we're we're at a we're at a stage in in, in our country and and just in our lives that you know certain things you just you just know you can't do. And I'm not saying that you can't speak on things that uh, are important to you, and if you feel like. There are people out there that are mistreating other people and that, that there's a message that needs to be sent. That's fine. But you have to do it in a manner, especially nowadays, in the social media age, in this fast food nation we live in, you have to be more, uh, you, you have to be a little more um, strategic with the way you do that. You can't just share something that has imageries or or speak of things that are just like from zero to a hundred. You got to ease into that stuff, you know. And um, you know there are many conversations that need to be made about certain groups and you know just mistreatment around the or just a, a, from all over the place, but. You got to do it in a smart way. You can't just, I mean, you can just look at the endless amount of tweets and, and whatever else. It's, I don't, I mean, I'm not a huge social media person. I have Facebook and you know, I have those things, but I have them for other reasons than, you know, just, you know, just talking about my life freely. But, you know, you, you have all these avenues where you can just give information and, you know, you've seen so many politicians and, and actors, actresses, people in the spotlight that where they've dug up things, even athletes, where they dug up things where, you know, they've said things that I'm sure they regret. I'm sure they didn't mean, you know, I'm sure they could have either not said it all because it was just flat out racist or if they felt a certain way, they could have worded it or they could have taking the time and been more strategic in the way they they put things instead of sharing just blatant racism or blatant anti-Semitic rhetoric, they could have 
taken it a different, you know, just done things completely different. But, you know, you got to live with, with the choices. And that's what Kyrie do, has to do. And he, he, he's been suspended now for five games with no pay, at least five games. It could be more. Um, he has apologized, but he's been, you know, Nike has suspended their relationship with him and other things. And it's just, just a sad situation where, you know, you, you've done things in the past. And that's the thing with athletes more so than even, I mean, I, I can, uh, you know, actors and, 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 you know, personalities, YouTube personalities, other personalities, you know, social media personalities. You know when you've when you've done things in the past that have garnered um, media and, and other uh, things to 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 take a look to put you in a, a microscope, it come, becomes easier and easier to use you as a whipping, you know, just just whipping on you. You know, if, if Kyrie didn't have prior infractions, maybe this wouldn't be so bad, and maybe he wouldn't be put in the light that he is. But he he did the, he had the big, uh, you know, the big spiel about the the vaccination, and then you know he was he just left and, and been on sabbatical or whatever with the Nets just because he wanted to, and he didn't, you know, he had things going on personally, and he just felt. I'm just going to do my thing, you know. You just can't do that. And that is why it's probably easier for certain things to happen to him now than it would have if he had just not been a repeat offender. offender. Just like Draymond Green, you know, the stuff with him, you know. He's been a repeat offender. Offender, so people are going to you're going to be judged more. So you now, Kyrie, even though I I I I don't like what he did, I think you know they could have handled this a little better. You know, but his, his unwillingness to kind of address it. But even then, you have to look at the Nets not allowing him to talk, and I can understand that because he could go out there and just completely embarrass them and then they they have no choice but to not only suspend them they might have to fire him they might have to let him go they might have to waive him you know so i can understand that aspect but at the same time there's got to be some dialogue to where you know maybe there can be some understanding in this and and I, i'm hearing that him and adam sandler are supposed to meet and sit down i don't know if that's already happened or if it's going to happen in the future but that's the way to handle it. You you need to sit down with people, and, and you know you you're in the you're in the spotlight. You know, even though you're just trying to play basketball, you're still someone that people are putting millions of dollars in your pocket into your bank account. So you can't just say whatever you want, unfortunately, because it comes with a price tag. And when you say things that that are racist or you know against people's religions and stuff like that and you take a hard stance on that even though that's of course your right to do that you have to understand there's consequences that come with that and that's that's this is the thing with Kyrie you know even if you he's strong he, he has a strong backing of that and that's fine other athletes people in the limelight excuse me have done that in the past and and that's a big thing, you know. That's in some ways a way to bring change to certain aspects of of who we are and how we live. But you got to understand there's going to be consequences. So you know whatever his end game is, I hope he has one. And this is just not him just you know doing Kyrie type stuff. But if he has some kind of end game and he's trying to make a, a, a change and trying to put something out there for people that will help in whatever aspect he wants to help people with, I'm not going to get into any of that. But if that's the case, then, you know, that's fine. But he has to understand there's consequences. So he, he's suffering those consequences now. 
you know, how he moves on from that, we'll see. So that's all I'm going to talk about the Nets. The Nets are right now, I'm not going to call them trash because they look pretty good tonight. Um, but from my seeing, Kyrie might not be that important to that team. So that's something you might want to look at. The Brooklyn Nets right now are, uh, let me check to be specific because I am, uh, you know, I'm on here. And things update constantly in basketball. So the uh, Brooklyn Nets are three and six. Um, that's not very good. But with that said, you know, um, if they can get to any type of normalcy, I think that they can be a solid. Um, you know, basketball team, and I, I don't know. I, I've heard the Chris Broussards and and some other people say they could be a finals contender. I, I don't see it. Even with Seth coming back, it gives them more shooting. But you, you got to think that you know guys like they don't really have a solid big. Claxton, Nick Claxton, is not your typical big, and he's not going to get you. If you go against a Giannis, if you go against a, uh, I would say Bam, but, you know, Bam doesn't always show up. Um, I'm just thinking about these teams that just have bigs. And, and you know, teams think that bigs don't work anymore in this running gun, this three-point European-style league. But you look at the Milwaukee Bucks, they're just going to destroy you on the boards. And if you're not a knockdown shooting team, then, you know, especially when the game slows down in a playoff situation, if you don't have bigs that can, you know, uh, really um, come through for you, so, you know, they, they got to look at their big man situation. You know, you look at Patty Mills. He's not the Patty Mills they had even last year. You know, he, he's he's struggling. He's older. He's an older player. So he's a veteran player. So, you know, you can't really um, count on him to be a big-time contributor. So, you know, now you have to look at, you know, what you have around you. So they may have to look at. They've traded away a lot of stuff. So, you know, and the fact that Ben Simmons is not producing for them he, so far, he's supposed to be, you know, they were saying he didn't have to shoot. But on defense, he's not, you know, he's not really being a uh, a lockdown defender. He's not the guy that can just lock somebody up and then you can count on KD and Kyrie to get you your buckets. That hasn't happened yet. So, for right now, the Nets are looking pretty middle of the pack to me. I don't know, you know, what will happen in the future, but right now they do not look like a uh, – <clears throat> they really just don't look like a, a team that can get you to the finals. When you look at the other – Eastern Conference teams, they just don't look like a team that's just going to have any kind of path to the NBA Finals. Um, I'm going to briefly just talk about the Lakers. Lakers are playing right now. They're doing fairly well against the Utah Jazz. Um, They've been a terrible team so far. Um, It's really been – they they haven't shot well – um, you know, they, they've tried different lineups. They have a team full of guys that are streaky. And, you know, I can say that, um, you know, the, you look at their win the other night against the Utah, not the Utah Jazz, but, um, against the, what was it? The New Orleans Pelicans, um, 
where uh, Walker, um, I don't know why I can't think of his name right now, but um, he got hot. But I'm a Spurs fan. He's been a part of our team for the past couple of years. So there's nothing telling me that. And, and he's not a, a Lonnie Walker. I'm sorry. I don't know why I couldn't think of his name. But, um, you know, he was never a guy that, you know, you think about Pop or, you know, the Spurs system. He, he they saw him, and that's why they let him go. And I'm sure the Lakers are not trying to position him in a in a way to where they're trying to develop him into a future Laker star. They're not doing that. So, you know, now you have a team that, you know, is, is just putting guys together. LeBron is in season, what is this, 20? 19? LeBron can't do it all. And LeBron does, just doesn't look like the LeBron of old. You know, he's slower. He can do things in spurts, but that's the thing. You have to do things, you know, in a calculated way. But, you you know, it's not a guaranteed thing. When, you, when you're older, when your body is... Starting to say, you know what, you know, you can think we can do this, all this stuff, but we may, we got to slow it down. Or, you know, I'm not going to be able to, I might be able to accelerate four or five times in the game, but after that, my acceleration is just not going to be there. You know, and he, you know, you're more injury prone when you're older, you know, he can't do it all. So this team... Westbrook, I know they want to just throw Westbrook in in the firing squad, but you know Westbrook ain't the problem. Anthony Davis will give you what he's going to give you, but Anthony Davis to me is not a top five player. I'm, I've never understood that he does he does most things good. He doesn't do anything exceptionally. I would not bet. Anything, and and Giannis can't shoot. But if you put Giannis and Anthony Davis against each other, I would almost, with no hesitation, say Giannis is going to dominate. Because there's nothing we see. We've seen Anthony Davis be very good, but there's been no consistent consistency to him ever since he became a Laker. He had the the good bubble. And and I'm not going to talk about the bubble thing. I don't. I think that was a uh, whatever it was. But he he had that. But since then he's he's done. He's coasted. He he's does well. He can score. He can get you buckets. But there's guys out there that can get buckets. He's tall. He's big. He you know he he can handle the ball. You know he's got a guy like LeBron who can get him the ball in certain positions where he's just long and lanky, he can score, you know? But does he impact the game enough to be that top five or or top ten player? I don't think so. And especially late. Like, early, he'll come out and he'll smack you in the face and then it'll just, like, it'll dwindle down. You might get something from him late in the game, but you might not. You don't know. And that's to me. That's not you know. You know, Giannis is gonna give you one hundred ten percent from tip off till you get all zeros on that shot clock on that scoreboard. You know, he's gonna give you his all. He's gonna to try to do whatever he can do. He's not afraid to go to the free throw line. He's not afraid to take a three when he has to. You know, so I think that the Lakers, as currently assembled are going to be mediocre. They're going to, especially in this, um, especially in this Western environment right now, where it's just like, 
every team is just guns blazing. I mean, I don't, I, and I've gone 30 minutes and I haven't even mentioned many of the other teams. So I'm just going to have to kind of break this up and, and try to do a part two. But Lakers, I mean, you look at the Warriors aren't good, but the Warriors seem better than the Lakers. Um, the uh, the Clippers are run of the mill right now. Kawhi is in and out. Kawhi is hurt. Paul George, you know they they'll they'll sit him down. Run of the mill right now. Of course, we expect those teams to have a push when it comes to probably February on. You know when things and even after. You know the Christmas games into January. You f- expect these teams that have you know these these uh, superstars and what have you. They're going to make that push and they're going to start you know really locking in. But do the Clippers really scare a lot of teams? Do the Warriors right now, as they've been playing, are teams kind of playing up because they are the defending champions? Are they scared of them or are they like? We're just as good as you, you know, y'all, you know, y'all a year older, y'all just aren't looking like the same team. So right now, I think the West is, I don't think the West is wide open. I think many teams are who they're going to be. I think the teams that we know that can be better are going to do better. I think teams like the Lakers, who were not proven because last year they had Veterans, now they have younger guys, but they're still falling into the same traps. Are they really who they are? I don't think so because they have turnaround. They, they, they're not, you know, when you have teams that come back with the same players, that's one thing. But when you have teams that come back with a fresh new, you know, lineups and everything else, you just got to see whether it works or not. Um I, I've spoken a lot. This is 30 minutes in. I'm I'm not trying to go an hour into the NBA, but I'm gonna I'm gonna just pick top four who I believe will be the top four in each division at the end. And I, there's many teams I want to speak on, but I'm just talking about who I think in May when it's time to start the the playoffs, who I think will be the top four teams in each division, or not each division, but each conference. So for the Eastern Conference, and I don't want to do, I don't want to do a ranking. I don't want to say who's one, two, three, and four. I just want to throw out the four teams that I think will be in the top four. I don't know where they will fall into that lineup, but I'm just going to throw it out there. I think the Milwaukee Bucks. I believe the Boston Celtics, I think those are easy locks. Right now, I think the, surprisingly, I think the Cleveland Cavaliers, and I believe the Chicago Bulls will be your top four teams in the Eastern Conference. I know I'm leaving out to Philly, Boston, not Boston, but Brooklyn, but I believe those teams have a tandem that have been together or they have new parts that fit very well to where I think they're going to continue their success. And I think that those four teams will find a way to win games to where they probably shouldn't. I think, you know, Miami, um, uh, Boston, not Boston, Brooklyn and Philly will fall into those last, those other slots. But I think Brooklyn will probably have to play in or maybe sneak their way in. Um, I think Miami will be a – I think they could either sneak into the fourth or I think they'll be a solid fifth. But other than that, I think the other teams – and I think Atlanta will be great, will be good. Um, But those are my top four teams and for the Eastern Conference. And for the Western Conference – I'm going to go with, because the Western Conference right now is really tough because a lot of the teams that we expect to be at the top are currently 
not playing very well. But I think our top four will be, and this is, whew, this is me winging it. Um, I think the Clippers will fall into, I think they will get their second win. I think Kawhi's knee will finally give him some kind of resolve to where he can play enough games to where they'll start to kind of gel where they should be gelling right now. And I think they'll be in the top four. Um, Whew, this is hard. Uh, I think the, I believe the Denver Nuggets will be a top four team, even though they've been hit and miss. I think that, you know, with Murray and Porter kind of getting back into the swing of things, I think that they will finally start to get it together and really put together, you know, their complete team. And I think as a complete team, they are a scary team. And I think they are definitely a top four team. The Phoenix Suns, even though Chris Paul has, isn't what he needs to be or has been offensively, I think he's still a vital part of that team and he's been doing very well. I think the Phoenix Suns have enough chemistry and enough. They have a solid big man. They have solid wing players. They have a defender, and they have a de facto scorer in Devin Booker to where they have the formula that's been created in these last few years to where I think that they will win enough games to be in the top four. That brings me to number two. In the fourth, I'm flip-flopping between the Grizzlies and the Mavericks, but I'm going to say the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, I think with... uh, I can't think of his name. Bain. Um, trying to think up his first name. Devin Bain, I believe it is. Um, for the Grizzlies, has shown a lot of um, just a huge leap in uh, production. And John Morant, of course, is right now. He's one of the you know candidates for top candidates for the MVP. So if all of that continues, if they're a young team, they're a fast team, they're a a team that has gelled very well because they've been playing together, I think that they're going to be a top four team. I don't think uh, – I mean, I think they'll have nights where they'll struggle for whatever reason. They're young. But they they have enough know how they have a decent coach and they they. I mean, when you've been together a couple of years, you know everybody's strengths and weaknesses, and I think that they're beyond the the the, the uh, aspect of you know finger pointing. So they know if they lose or if something goes wrong, they know who you know it was my fault. So they're nobody's going to point the finger. They already know. So I think that the uh, – so for right now, I think it's going to be uh, the Clippers, the um, Denver Nuggets, Phoenix Suns, and the Memphis Grizzlies. That's crazy because you're missing out on the Lakers, the Warriors, even the uh, New Orleans Pelicans that are doing well. But I just think that those teams are the ones right now that are showing me that they can really win it outside of huge trades or some or huge injuries. Those teams that show me that they can be somewhat consistent and they, uh, you know, they have a system prepared to go forward that, you know, no matter who you face, it's going to work in some aspects and they're going to be able to put it all together to win so um yeah so right now my my f- i hope you heard my four because <laughs> i'm not at all confident in my four on either side i have the bucks boston um dang, cleveland and chicago in the east and i have Right now, the Clippers, Memphis, Phoenix, 
and the Nuggets in the top four in the West. So don't hold me to that. Uh, I'm sure we'll have lots of, of, of things going on as we proceed. Um, this, you know, this is just me kind of just throwing out information. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, like I said, tomorrow I will be reviewing WWE's Crown Jewel from Saudi Arabia. It's a pretty stacked card, so I will review that here on the GOATcast. Um, I will also be trying to do some anime stuff. I don't know when. Also, I will, um, you know, I'll, I'll try to, you know, I'll definitely be here next week with Wakanda Forever, Black Panther 2. Um, I will review that. I will do a non-spoiler, and I will probably do a live spoiler, um, well, a live stream spoiler for, for that. So, Look for that next weekend. I will definitely have the Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever non-spoiler review out hopefully Friday. I'm going to try to see it Friday. And then Saturday, we'll do we'll try to do spoilers. If it gets pushed back, then it'll probably be Saturday for the non-spoiler and Sunday for the spoiler. So we'll just see how everything goes. Um, I appreciate you guys. You know, Let me know what you think about this season so far. Uh, do you think I'm crazy with my predictions? Do you think, uh, you know, what do you think about Kyrie? Um, I will leave all, um, well, I, I'll, I'll give you my, um, email. It is goatcast1 at gmail.com. If you want to you know, email me, if you want to hit me up on Twitter, I'm not a big fan of Twitter, but you can hit me up at goatcast C. On Twitter, um, you can add me at Charter Charter C H A R T E R W A L T E R Charter Walter on Facebook. If you want to just you know you just want to talk to me, you want to message me, whatever you want to do, um, you know. So email me, you know, and I'll and um, just let me know if y'all want me to do a poll or you know whatever you want me to do. I'll do it. Um, so just email me. Tweet me, uh, you know, hit me up on Facebook, any of those things. But I do appreciate you guys for listening. Um, this is just me having fun. This is a, this is a love, labor of love, um, you know. So uh, just enjoy. Um, I hope to see you back. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing the Crown Jewel tomorrow. Uh, we'll try to get back with anime soon. Um, I will have some movie reviews, of course, with. The, Wakanda Forever coming out. Uh, I haven't seen Black Adam yet. I'm not a huge DC fan. I've heard mixed things about it. But if I need to, I will eventually get to that. But anyway, thank you guys for the night. And uh, thank you for listening. And we will see you next time on the GOATcast.